Today's episode is one that you don't want to click through at all. We play the biggest pot of our entire life, surmounting 40,000 US dollars. You won't believe the action in today's episode. Will I come out with the biggest win of my life or the biggest loss? Stay tuned to find out. Sometimes there aren't words to describe in the feeling that you have in this specific moment. Today is one of those times. I'm playing the most ridiculous stakes I ever have in my life, 50, 100, 200. At least for the time being, the straddle is off, or at least not mandatory every hand. And I'm into this game for 10,000 US dollars. In this very first hand of note, why do I deserve such a splendid greeting to the table? American Airlines, baby, pocket aces, the weapons of mass destruction. Here we are under the gun in the biggest game of our life, raising to $300 with pocket aces. Next to act makes the call. Pepe from the button decides to call as well. And none other than Mike X, a great friend of mine and a really dangerous player when hot, decides to flick in a three bet to $2,000. If I'm being quite fair here, Mike is definitely one to make a really capable move, but with the sizing this big, I feel like I might have Mike in a corner with a very premium hand, but just not as premium as pocket aces. I feel like there's nothing else to do here besides go all in. So I go all in for $10,000. The action folds back to Mike and he cannot call quick enough. We immediately let our friend know that we do have pocket aces as that is the courteous thing to do and Mike flips over his hand. This is literally out of the movie rounders. He has pocket kings, an absolute cooler. We decide to run it out twice as this is quite a bit of money. The first board runs out jack high and the second board flops him dead as it comes out ace high. Ladies and gentlemen, just like that, $20,000 is coming my way, and that is just the tip of the iceberg for today's episode. Hard to really come back from the absolute high from that first hand, but we've got an entire session ahead of us. The very first hand of the session, we win a $20,000 pot, looking to catapult the rest of our session and hopefully show or foreshadow what's in store for the rest of it. At this point, the straddle is on to 200. I'm under the gun with ace king, baby. We decide to make it $800 to go. Pepe in the small blind decides to make the call. We're going off to a flop here that is not very great as it comes six, five, four with all hearts. I do remember that I do have a red king, but I don't think it's a great idea to look back at your hand during the moment. So... I'll cross that bridge when I need to get there, but for now, I'm going to pretend like I have the King of Hearts. So I decided to throw out a C-bet of $900, to which Pepe decides to reluctantly fold. Luckily for us, probably the best hand, but still very much so happy to take it down. It's going to be really hard to lose in a session where we follow aces with ace-king, and we follow ace-king with ace-king once again. Under the gun, limps here for 100 bucks. The action's over to me in the small blind. We're going to go ahead and isolate this to $500. The limper does in fact make the call and the flop comes out 10-9-3. To this point, things have been fairly easy going, but this time around when I see bet for 450 and our opponent calls, things are going to look like we're going to need to either improve or to unload the clip. At this point, unloading the clip seems to be the best option, so I go ahead and bet another time here for $1,200. Our opponent thinks about it for a moment before deciding to come along with a call. I'm very worried. There's no way around it. This pot is absolutely ballooning up and the river card is not a great one as it comes out the jack of clubs. It's not great because a lot of the straight draws that my opponent probably has gets there, but I mean, I have a king, you know, we block king queen or whatever. The one thing I will say is that if I happen to have a hand like ace jack and I was just barreling off or something like that and improved the top pair, I wouldn't be going for value with a really, really big sizing. I think half pot is, you know, okay or somewhere in the neighborhood. So I don't polarize myself here and I just throw out a bet for $2,500. Our opponent thinks about it for a second before deciding to fold. We are very happy, so much so that we show our hands so we could take the stand-up game win in. We get to take our seat and luckily for us, we don't have to pay out that bounty. 
I should probably preface the rest of the session with saying that the stand-up game will be on for every single one of these hands. Either I've already won it or I need to win it. And the stand-up game in this game is huge. It's $300 a person, the biggest I've ever played, which me leaves me a max penalty of paying $2,100 or the loser for that matter, $2,100. Anyways, in this very next hand, the bomb pot is on which means that there actually is no stand-up game so what i just said is irrelevant but quickly to go over it we end up scooping an over eight thousand dollar pot or we get lucky enough to have a boat on one of the boards and the nut flush on the other sheesh we'll definitely take it this sun run of a session literally can't go wrong Taking a break from the bomb pots to introduce no limit once again the straddle is on to 200 I decided to do something weird. I just throw in a limp here. Uh, I, I don't know. I'm just playing stakes. I'm not really too used to playing. And, you know, maybe my donkiness is getting a better of me. But, hey, let's throw in the strat. Let's throw in, let's throw in a little limp. Oh, that, that can't hurt anybody, right? The small blind obliges with a call. And luckily for us, Marion on the straddle checks his option. Feels like we're counting our lucky ducks. Playing a relatively small pot for this game. Three ways to a flop that comes... Queen of Clubs, Nine of Hearts, and Four of Hearts. We do in fact have the Jack of Hearts, which is fairly reasonably important to have. But at this point, when the small blind leads for 500, we can go a couple of ways here. A raise might be pretty exciting. A call seems okay. And a fold seems pretty dumb. So I go ahead and make the call, which is probably my least favorite option. But we're going off to a turn card here that comes out the Five of Clubs. Not great. Not in the slightest. But when my opponent checks to me... I feel like checking back is the best option. Don't think I can get much better ever to fold. I feel like pairs are going to continue on a brick of a turn card like this. It does bring in a backdoor flush, but once again, I'd rather realize my equity and check it back. The river card comes out the four of spades. All right, so we don't get there, and the board pairs seems like a disaster through and through. And when my opponent bets out pretty big here for 1600, I do consider bluff catching for a second. The only problem is I block all of the draws that I'd want my opponent to have. So, although I do want to do it and my heart is, I want to do it bad. I just don't have a great hand to do so. Having a heart and having a jack and having a king, these things just probably aren't good for me anyway. So, we go ahead and reluctantly fold. Once again, we are taking the action to the bomb pod streets. Not much to go over besides the simple fact that we have top pair top kicker on one of the boards. And on the other board, we have the nut flush draw. We get it in four ways with the 3k cap being in place for nearly a $15,000 pot. And unfortunately, we don't improve. We end up losing that massive one and two players split this pot. No bueno. Well, from our highest point, we have now trickled slowly and slowly down from around twenty-four dollars or $23,000 to sitting somewhere in the neighborhood of like 16 17 000. again not the end of the world but we've got to start stopping the bleeding in this following hand once again there's two people left in the stand-up game you have to pay 2100 dollars to remind you if you lose it's me versus pepe and pepe is away from the table if there's ever a chance to be pepe at anything it's probably when he's not playing the game of poker at least i have a little bit of an advantage there Understanding that everyone at the table knows that that is a simple fact that is in play, I have to raise a little bit on the bigger size. Uh, yeah, it's. I don't know if this is excusable, but the straddle is on, and I just open for 10x. I make it $2,000 to go after I look down at pocket eights. Mars, one of the Husser regulars to my left, decides to make the call, and Mariano in the straddle calls as well. Three ways to a flop of $6,000 plus dollars in the middle, pre-flop, the biggest raise of my life. It comes out jack nine three. Not great. There is a front door flush I worry about, but when the action checks to me, at this point, with as much money as I invested in here, why not throw out a small C bet for fifteen hundred? Mars makes the call, and Mariano folds. Turn card is an ace of hearts. Okay, really good card for sure. I mean, for a lot of reasons. Uh, one of the main ones being that we now improve and to nothing, but our range should right. We can pick up like two pairs sometimes here and it's not that likely that my opponent's ever gonna have a super strong ace as it in three bet me so let's go for it baby i make the continuation double barrel from freaking i don't even know where forty five hundred dollars to go mars 
is looking at me, eyeing my stack. I have about 11 or 12,000 behind at this point, and he just sticks it in. Oh, man, he just sticks it in my freaking face, all in. <sighs> I can't call off here, not with 15th pair, so I have to fold. In the very next hand, Pepe comes back in and wins the stand-up game. So, yeah, whole lot of not greatness from up, like, Twelve, fifteen thousand dollars to now down, like two thousand dollars. Ugh. This will serve as your mid-session update. I was so interlocked in the session that I couldn't get away from the table. But there are some very important things that I need to let you guys know about. That is tomorrow, our first ever sponsored free roll, meaning that I put up all the price pool money myself, will be happening on the Splash Squads. A thousand dollars completely for free. Thought we'd do something to give back to all y'all on the Christmas season. So if you haven't already, make sure to sign up on the splash squads completely for free I think for you guys it's gonna be a dollar while that's going on we will also be hosting like a little meetup game we we'll playing like 25 cent 50 cent and one dollar or 50 cent one dollar so if you guys want to play with me that is going to be tomorrow at 10 a.m pacific standard time completely for free it's a pretty big deal anyways just finished up at the gym let's get the rest of our day going and enjoy the rest of the video to be quite fair quite a few more hands go on where unfortunately things don't pan out my way and we very quickly end up into this game for over fifteen thousand dollars creeping up to twenty thousand dollars we're not excited about it but a lot of really small pots not going my way and that can add up over time to very quickly being into this game for twenty thousand dollars the one thing i will add is that luckily for me i'm sitting right next to mike x and for all it's worth both mike x and i have not had a very great string of cards coming to us over the last couple of hours so we're just keeping each other company and he's honestly keeping my mood up if it wasn't for him i'm going to tell you guys very honestly i would have probably punted my stack off so much so that i have this hand to prove it to you i'm under the gun and i look down at ace seven offsuit once again the stand-up game is on and i don't want to lose it back to back times so i make it 300 dollars to go mariano is in the small blind and he decides to three bet me to 1200 as we all know, Mariano is hyper aggressive and definitely a shark when it comes to three betting. He's going to penalize me in every spot he can, but with the action folding back over to me, the one thing that I don't do is battle back against Mariano too often. And this is literally the worst hand you could probably ever do it with, but fuck it. Like, what in Rome, baby? I four bet to $3,100. I'm making my stand today, Mariano. You're not going to push me over today, pal. I'm leaving myself only like $8,000 behind at this point, and luckily for me, Mariano does end up deciding for folding. Oh, yes, we get our stand-up or our stupid game chip, and we give back those horrific cars to the dealer. Thank you, Magic. Thank you, Sammy. You guys are the best. So to this point, our entire session has culminated to this. By some lucky, lucky string of hands, we've now been able to build up our stack to somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 to 17 ish thousand dollars. Very helpful as we're into this game for 20k. In this following instance, the straddle is on to 200. Mike X is under the gun and he opens to 500. I'm next to Axe and I decide a three bet after looking down an ace queen of spades to 1500. The big blind Pepe decides to cold call and Mike calls as well. We're going three ways off to a massive flop here. Gonna need to hit and oh my goodness, do we hit baby. Flopping middle pair and the nut flush draw. Action checks over to me. I am in position for the entirety of this hand. I throw out a small seabed of 1400. I, honestly, like, I don't know why I make such a small seabed. I think we should be probably sizing up here multi-way, but in real time, I just thought that since I had such a huge hand on this board, I'd rather get two calls than just one call of a medium bet. So I don't know. Seems like things are working out because both players make the call. We're going three ways off to a turn card. That is a brick. Five of hearts doesn't change anything. And to be honest, the moment is pretty much catching up to me. Big pot brewing the action checks to me. Don't want to bloat the size of the pot. I'd hate to bet and get jammed on and like puke in my mouth and just what shrug call it off for bajillion dollars in my stack. Yeah, I'll pass on that. I'll just check it to the river and oh my goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, the ten of spades. Can you believe it? I, I mean, what? The nuts? Really? Just the nuts? And even better yet. 
By some miracle, Pepe decides to lead off for $3,000. And if that isn't enough, Christmas has definitely come early, guys, because Mike X calls the 3,000. What the? What is going on? There is over 10, what, 15? I don't even know. There's so much money in the middle, but there is nothing for me to do besides get the money all in. I take a deep breath. I look back at my hand to make sure I do, in fact, have the nuts and there's no way to be beat. I count down in my head a clock of 15 seconds before I know the inevitable is coming. I announce all in for $13,000. Pepe asks for a count and thinks about it for some time. Will he make the call? Ugh, unfortunately, he folds. But Mike X, what? what is that, Mike? Okay, uh, Mariano, yeah. I'm gonna be the superstar of his vlog. Okay. Either, uh, yeah, one way or the other. <laughs> Got the nuts, Mike. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> Mike makes the call in what is one of the biggest coolers I've ever been a part of. A $40,000 pot, and he also has a flush. Oh my goodness. <sighs> that was unbelievable. 40,000 US real dollars coming my way. Let's fucking go. To this day, I have literally never done any type of drugs in my entire life ladies and gentlemen that's the closest thing i've ever felt to a out of body high experience that was unreal i don't know how mariano and ethan do this like on the regular this shit is crazy anyways we have more hands to go over more action early position mr mariano speaking of the devil decides to race to 300 i'm on the button with king jack of spades here we can go a couple ways here but to be quite honest when i three bed mariano just loves four betting me for some reason and a hand this beautiful i'd hate not to be able to see the flop so i go ahead and make the call we're going off to a flop here heads up where i flop top pair on jack six six rainbow he checks it over to me, and what I do love doing is in spots like this, checking it back. You know, we have a nice hand here. Don't need to bloat the size of the pot or get check raised, so I check it back. Turn card is a nine of hearts. Doesn't change a whole lot here. And at this point, Mariano throws in the delayed C bet for 300. Easy call for us, and the river card comes a four of diamonds. At this point, nothing is easy anymore. Mariano slaps me in the face with 3,500 chips. Yeah, quite a lot of money. Kind of a sick little spot, but I'm never folding. I'm not good enough to do it. That plus, Mariano is more than good enough to find crazy bluffs. I go ahead and make the call, and Mariano announces king high. We win another huge pot. We're playing five hand at this point, so things are going to get a little crazy, a little wacky. Under the gun, it raises to 700. There is a $200 straddle out there. I'm in the big blind. I call with pocket nines. Five handed, this is a clear cut three bet, but you know, whatever. The flop comes out 644. We flop an over pair, and I check call a $500 bet. The turn card is E4 of spades. It now improves us to a boat, and when I check it over to my opponent, he makes a bet for 700, to which we decide to call. The river card is not my favorite as it comes the king of spades. For a lot of reasons, as you guys probably understand, all of his bluffs, like king's highs and ace highs, ace king, king queen, king jack, all of those crazy bluffs now improve. And when I check it over to my opponent, he bombs it for $10,000. I've never played with this opponent before, but I do pick up a live tell. And I have a little bit of trouble being able to realize if it's the live tell that makes me want to call or the one that makes me want to fold. But after a bit of thinking, <sighs> I have so much money in front of me. It'd be ridiculous for me to delete half my winnings in one stupid mistake but it could also go a long way and propel me to an over $50,000 cash out. <sighs> I'm in between so many different spots. I don't know what the hell to do, but I decide to fold. I just felt like my opponent had ace queen. I would have bet my life on it. Something like that. Ace jack, ace 10, ace queen, but I just couldn't muster the courage to call. I end up making the fold. I don't know if I would have ever had a better hand in that situation, considering I didn't 3-bet pre-flop. Maybe I slow play quads sometimes, or... Uh, I don't even know, but... All that being said, I asked my opponent to show for the vlog, and show he does. He first flashes an ace, which almost immediately makes me sick. I'm like, oh, you have ace-queen, and he shows us ace-queen. Incredible bluff from our opponent. Put us in an absolute bind. 
In spots like that, you just gotta tip your cap. And oh my goodness, we have so much to talk to you guys about now. I can do this with my eyes closed. Uh, we are a few days removed, thankfully, so we've had some time to process everything we've been thinking about. And man, oh man, what a freaking day. If you guys are interested in watching the golf stuff, close to scratch, baby. The link is always in the description. A bunch of really st fun stuff on there. Some more gambling-related golf content. But anyways, it was the biggest one of my life by far. 120K. Uh, in a space of like four or five hours, which is pretty awesome. And it didn't come easy at the beginning. We had it really easy and then we just dusted it all off and found a way to battle back and win some money. Once again, y'all, if you guys are interested at all, the merch is completely free. All you have to do is subscribe, like, and comment. I'll be giving away two articles of merch every single video for the rest of this year. Thank you guys so much for watching these episodes. It means so much to me. Once again, if you guys are interested in watching me on the live streams, I'll be playing on the lodge as well TCH December uh, the 4th and 5th at the TCH and December 13th and 14th I think at the lodge so we'll see you guys then close to broke takes over Texas and hope you guys have a lovely day stabby Saturday more importantly run good to the tables y'all see you guys soon